For the latest Bobby Duke video, I made a quick 3D explainer to showcase a glass blowing technique for which you need to stick some speckle of glass onto the surface of an object. For this, I made a quick setup using simulation zones to make a really simple sticky object simulation. With that, you can stick about any object to the surface of any other object. The only prerequisite is that the object on which you want to stick something needs to be properly UV unwrapped with no overlap or anything else. At the end of the video, I will show a simple way to push this method further to also work with simple fluids, whether it could be mud or snow. So let's get into it. So first, in a new Blender scene, let's delete the cube and add a plane at the ground. Now let's add a second one, which will act as our grain simulation. And let's go to the Geometry Node tab. Here, let's add a new Geometry Node setup and call it Sticky Grains. So now let's begin by instancing a few points. For this, I like to use the points node. Here we can set the number of points as an input. Let's put a few thousand of them. And for the position, we can use a random value set to vector from minus one to one on the X and Y axis, which will give us, which will give us this. Let's lower the points a bit. Now we can add a first node set to multiply so we can change the size as we want. Let's change the distribution so it can look nicer with vector curves. And here I'm just going to set a slight S curve like this on the, on the X and Y axis. Now let's set some random radius for the points with a random value set to float. And here we can also set the min and max as inputs. Like this, for example. And now I just want to offset them depending on their radius, so they are always sitting on the ground. As a set position node. And just plug in your random value as a combined XYZ on the D input, and you can plug this into the offset. Now we have our starting points. Let's select all this and frame it with Ctrl J. And I'm just going to call it Generate Grains. Now let's add the object on which we want to seek everything. In my case, I'm going to add a simple UV sphere, which I'm going to squash a bit, like this, for example. Set shade smooth, and I'm going to make a simple animation. Just reducing the animation length a bit to 100 frames, restart this position keyframe location and rotation and at the end with a slight rotation I can keyframe it like this. I will just offset it on the start so it's already on the ground and now we have this very simple animation. I'm just going to offset everything a bit on the z-axis so we have better overlap with the grains. Now let's bring in our object in the geometry and setup for the grains. We can set the object as a group input in here, make sure to set it as relative and do not check as instance. Now the principle will be to use a simulation zone to test if we have collision between the grains and our object and change some values depending on that. So let's add a simulation zone. And in order to do everything, let's first add a two store named attributes node set to boolean. And those two nodes will store the information about which grains are already touched and which grains are the newly touched ones. And make sure to set the new first and the touched then. Now to test for the collisions, we can take the geometry from our object info node and sample the nearest surface from our points. Set to vector. We want to sample the position and here we can compute the difference of position between the points on our sphere and the position of our grains like this. Now we want to apply a threshold to some value so we can say which grains are touched and which are not. And for this, we can simply compare the difference of position to the normal of the surface. So for example, if the closest point is this one and we are checking for this point, 
if the normal on the sphere at this point is in this direction, so it's in the same direction as our difference of position, the point is outside and so we don't need to consider it as touched. And if it's the opposite, which means the normal and the difference of position are in opposite direction, we can say it has been touched. So for this, we can duplicate the sample nearest surface node to sample this time the normal and to compare the direction, we can compute the dot product between this one and the subtract operation from before. Now, at the threshold, we compute a less than operation on the compare. And for now, we can just let it to zero. Now we can plug this into the selection of the touched attribute, which we can set to true like this. Now let's check the result and take name attribute and see about the touch attribute. And if we visualize that on our animations, it looks like this. So all the points that are touched by our sphere are correctly lighting up. Now we also need to compute the newly touched point at each frame. For this, it would be pretty easy. We can duplicate this name attribute touch node. If we are working on this store name attribute node, this will store the value of the previous iteration, and this will be the new. So if we compute a subtract operation in Boolean math between those two nodes, and plug this as the value, not as the selection as before, we should see only the points that are newly touched by our object, which seems to be working great. Now to make our grains stick to the surface of our object, we need to set the position outside of the simulation zone. For selection, we can take a named attribute because we only want to move the points that have been touched, like this. For the allocation, we need to find a way to fix the position of the grain relative to the sphere. And the cleanest way to do this is to use the UV space of the sphere. If it is done cleanly and has no overlap, there will be a single point in UV space corresponding to a point on the surface of our sphere. So if we can make sure that each point that we have been touching stores the UV location of the points of the sphere it has been touching, we can compute the location of the sphere that corresponds to this UV location. So for this, at the beginning, where we sampled the normal and position of our object, we can also sample a named attribute, which here will be UV map. So we sample the UV map of the sphere, which we can check is the right name of the default map as shown here. Back on our points, we can set the sample UV as a new attribute right after those two, set to vector, and I will name it UV underscore target. This one, we only want to set it to the new points because the value of the previously computed points will not change. You can set the attribute to new and plug this into the selection. And so for the value, we can plug in our sampled UV map like this. Now, if we check the look of this new attribute, so UV target, we should have the points light up with the colors corresponding to a UV space, so red and greenish values, which seems to be working correctly. Now let's use those values to sample the position. We can duplicate this named attribute UV target node, and we also need our object info node. Now to link the two, we can use a sample UV surface node. So the source UV map will be just as before UV map spelled like this. And the sample UV is our UV target, like this. Now, as I explained before, we need to sample the location. So we can set this to vector and sample the position. And now if you plug this into our set position node, let's just disable the viewer node and it should be working. That's pretty great. Now to continue, let's have a look at this with instances instead of those points to take a look at the rotation. So here I'm going to use the extra mesh add-on to make some rocks. Let's say five of them, which I'm going to put in a collection called simply called rocks. Now after the set position, we can add an instance on points node 
for the instances, let's add a collection info, which we are going to set as an input. Now we check relative separate children and reset children, and on the instance on points we can set peak instance. For the scale, we can set the radius of the points as we set it before. And just to make things more interesting, we can set the rotation as a random value from minus pi on all channels to pi. Now if we play our animation, we should have an issue because our points are not rotating along with the sphere. The fix will be pretty easy. Along with the storing of the UV's position of the sphere, we can also store the normal vector, which will allow us to rotate all the rocks to make sure they are always in the direction of the normal. So this new attribute will be normal target. And for the value, we can set the normal from the sample near a surface from before. Now to use this value, we can add an align Euler to vector node right between the random value and the rotation input of our instance on points node. And so for the vector, we can take a name attribute, which will be our normal target. Make sure to also set the selection to the name attribute of the new points like this. And now if we test our animation, the rotation of the points will should follow the rotation of our object. It seems to be working really great. I'm just cleaning everything. And now let's add the final detail, which will be to control how deep our points will be sinking into our sphere. For this, we want to slide the position of the points along the normal other sphere. Here, to make sure the normal is really synchronized with the position we get from the UV, we can duplicate the sample UV surface node like this. And for the second one, we can just set the value. Instead of position, set it to normal. This value we can scale by the radius of the points. And now we can just add this to the position we computed earlier, like this. Now, as of now, the position doesn't really make sense, so we need to offset the value. So let's add a math node right after the radius node here. And for the value, we can set this as a new input. And now, if we also set this new value as the value from the threshold of the less than compare operation from before, we should have everything working correctly with an offset value. For example, if I put an offset of minus 0 0.05, our grains are all slightly on the surface of our object. And if we offset the sphere in the animation to make it really sink in with the grain, We can offset this value even more. So for example, minus 0.1. And here the points will be sticking on the inside of our sphere. Now, if you want to add more precision to the computing, you can add a subdivision surface modifier to a sphere. And everything seems to be working really great. And that's it for this really simple animation setup. As usual, it will be available for free on my Gumroad. You can do a lot of things with this setup whether it will be sticking some things to the tires of a truck or even computing some more advanced stuff like mud interaction or snow interaction. Because for example, instead of instancing our points, we could do a points to volume operation and a volume to mesh operation. Which with enough points to start with can give a really nice sticking simulation.
And here is also the final file for the thumbnail of this video, in which I simply have two setups for the simulation, one for the grains as explained in the tutorial, and one setup for a kind of free simulation with some mud as I explained at the end. I am using a simple wheel model by only Morozov on Sketchfab, and with the simulation looking like this, along with some fine lighting, really simple textures, and camera position, we can reach this kind of result. This file is also available on my Gumroad. Now I hope you found this tutorial interesting and you learned something. Feel free to ask if you have any question. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And see you next time.